the principle of conservation of charge states that the total amount of charge in an isolated system remains constant. And one way that we show that is with something called charge sharing, where we have two charged objects that are initially separate from each other. So here we have object A with a charge of 7 coulombs and object B with a charge of negative 3 coulombs. And so what we're saying is the isolated system is the system that contains these two objects. And so what we can see here is that we can see that the total amount of charge here is equal to 7 coulombs plus the negative 3 coulombs. The total amount of charge in this system is 4 coulombs. What would then happen is these two objects are then brought into contact with each other where they touch each other and as a result of this contact they are able to share charge. So what we find here is that at this point we still have the total amount of charge 7 coulombs plus negative 3 coulombs. We still have 4 coulombs of charge in the system and then these objects are then separated once again still our isolated system only contains these two objects and the question here would ask what the charge is on each of these objects and so what we have is called charge sharing and we can calculate the new charge on object A by realizing that it is going to be equal to the initial charge of A plus the initial charge of B so the total charge in the system divided equally amongst in this case the two objects obviously it's possible for there to be three objects and then you would divide by three so in this case it's going to be the seven coulombs of a plus the negative three coulombs of b divided by two which gives us four divided by two which tells us that the new charge on object a is equal to a charge of positive two coulombs and it is also going to be the new charge on object b because the charge is shared equally a extension of this question would be calculate the change in charge for any one of these objects and we can say that the change in charge on object A is equal to the final charge of A minus the initial charge of A and that tells us the final charge is 2, the initial charge was 7 and the change therefore was negative 5 coulombs and as we can see A went from having a charge of plus 7 to having a charge of plus 2 which clearly shows that it has lost 5 coulombs of charge. We can do the same for object B where here we can calculate the change in charge of object B by subtracting the initial charge from the final charge and the initial charge, sorry the final charge here was 2, the initial charge was negative 3, the signs here are important and we see that the change in charge here was positive 5 coulombs which again makes sense because we went from negative 3 to positive 2. What's important to see here is that the change in charge is equal but opposite because 5 coulombs of charge were transferred from one object to the other and then we know that protons are unable to move so the only charge that can ever be transferred is electrons so it's always the electrons that are transferred because they are free to move and as we can see, the electrons would go from this particle or the substance or the object with more negative charge towards the object with less negative charge. As we can see, B is negatively charged, therefore has an excess of electrons and the electrons would therefore be transferred from B to A. We can calculate the number of electrons using the formula N is equal to Q over QE, where we know that QE is the fundamental charge. And we can see here that our 5 coulombs of charge that were transferred divided by our fundamental charge, which is given as 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That is the charge on a single proton or on a single electron. And putting that into a calculator gives us a value of 3.125 times 10 to the power of 19 electrons that were transferred from B to A. Electrons are always transferred from the more negative to the less negative object. And then as we can see here, the total amount of charge in this system has remained the same. 